Hello and welcome to episode five of the Behind the Medal podcast. With me, Gary Damer. <laughs> <laughs> and with me, Dean Smith. What are you saying, Gary? <laughs> I'm going to do all the usual begging. Uh, so give us a, a follow on Twitter, at Behind the Medal. Um, and when you're listening to us on your podcast platforms, if you give us a, a subscribe, give us a review, give us a thumbs up. Um, it makes us look popular and it means we can keep making this. Yeah, it makes us feel loved by all you beautiful people. Mm. Um, so yeah, episode five. Uh, before we start, we just have this very quick message. Warning! Warning! This episode contains swearing. So, if you don't like words any stronger than... Spanner! Or... Ragamuffin! Then maybe this podcast isn't for you. Okay, buckle up, hands inside the car at all times, and let's... I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Start the fucking show. Ding. Gary. <laughs> Gary and Dean, Gary and Dean, chatting along in a new podcast. Gary and Dean, Gary and Dean, and Gary's got hairy hands. We run around and see the world Try our flung tails, Dean's hair is curled We talk some shit and play some games For legal reasons, some names are changed Oh, sorry Gary and Dean, Gary and Dean Chatting along on a new podcast Gary and Dean, Gary and Dean You won't get this time back Okay, so welcome back to Behind the Medal. Uh, last week we heard from uh, the brilliant Scott Cunliffe. Hope you enjoyed that. But we're back. It's just me and Gary in a room in Manchester. Mm. And we've got some more tales for you. Um, we finished episode three by saying that we were careering headfirst towards the uh, Fanbridge Half Ironman. Uh, before we got there, we obviously needed to tune up our skills a little bit more. So we decided to gather at Gary's house one rainy Saturday morning, I think, I think so. it was. Yeah. Um, and we uh, did a, 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 I think they call it block training. Is that what it's yeah. called? Brick training. Is it brick training? <laughs> I think so. Brick training. <laughs> why would it be brick training? Well, why would it be block training? Because you do two things. It's like a block. Yeah, but you do brick training because you're building it. Oh, is that right? Well, I'm sticking with bricks. So oh, I'm you? sticking with block. <laughs> so tell us. Let's in call tweet. the whole thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brick or block or whatever the frig it is. Um, we decided to uh, cycle from uh, North Manchester to Blackpool and then run along the Blackpool front. That's what we decided to do, didn't we? Yeah, because the couple of weeks before I'd done that cycle to Blackpool uh, for the Christie Charity. Yes, which we heard about episode three. Yeah, so that's yeah. where I got the inspiration because I sort of knew the route. So I suggested it to you guys that we should cycle because I knew the route. Mm -hmm. um, it'd be fairly easy to do. And then once we get there, uh, ditch the bikes and uh, get on our toes and do a bit of running. Now, the only thing with that is I spent about a week and a half, two weeks, desperately trying to, I don't know if you remember this, desperately trying to find somewhere to put the bikes. Yeah, because you just said then casually ditch the bikes, but it took us a while logistically to sort that out, didn't it? Yeah, because we have mentioned again that the bikes are a nice bit of kit. I didn't fancy leaving them chained up to a lamppost in Blackpool. <laughs> outside <laughs> Weatherspoons. <laughs> yeah, no offence to Blackpool, but especially Dan's because this was a day a bit of kit. So I was, uh, I think I, I got in touch with everyone. Leisure centres, yeah. uh, you know, all, I was looking for those bike boxes outside the train station, yeah. anywhere to put them. I couldn't find anywhere. So then I just started Googling hotels mm. with cheap rooms, just emailing them saying, look, I just need a room so where we can put three bikes. And it's amazing how many people got precious about the rooms. Go, nope, you can't use the rooms for that. It's these twenty pound rooms, <laughs> which I'm sure a lot worse stuff goes oh, on. Oh my, absolutely Blackpool. Well. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we finally found somewhere um, that let us put the bikes in the room. Wasn't it a spa as well? It was. Well, it was called. Oh, can I say the name? No, no, no. Well, yeah, it was called something something, something spa. Rose. Oh, wait. Right. <laughs> What, what what made it a spa hotel? It had running water. Yeah, it had a sink. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they, they finally agreed to let us put the bikes. So yeah, bless them. That was logistics side. Um, we got, the, as I say, we knew the bike route and we knew the running route. We were just going to run up and down the front. And yeah. So that was the idea. Um, and, and yeah, it was, uh, I think it was a rainy Saturday morning. 
we arrived at Gary's house. Um, myself and Dan arrived at Gary's house with our kit. And we just followed you for a bit. It's not a particularly inspiring route, is it? It's up not through. Really. Is it Berry and then. Surely and all through there. Yeah. But a decent mileage, wasn't it? It's like 56 miles, I think. So that, which covers the half iron bike. Exactly. So we knew we knew we could box that off. Yeah. And it, it's a pretty safe route as well. There's not any t anything too risky on the roads. <laughs> yeah, no autobahns. Yeah. And we'd also, I remember, I think it was my first go at trying gels as well. I'd never right. tr tried gels on a marathon before, but I bought some for this event. Had you not? No. I didn't know that. I thought you'd been caning them things as well. No, I'd never done them before. Because not with your guts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, I think I tried one once in Tromso. I think it might have been. Yeah. And I just thought it was disgusting. It was the yeah. worst, the consistency of it, the taste of it. Yeah. I, I couldn't even finish the damn thing and I couldn't swallow it. And How was it? Any movements? No, I think it was fairly safe. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, it was I all. I can't remember. It was all contained. What I do remember, though, it was our first uh, outing in the tri suits. Yes, that's true. Modeling those. Yeah, because uh, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, they are basically a lycra onesie. Onesie, yeah, with short, obviously short pants and short. Uh, is it sleeveless? Arms? Yeah, vest top. The thing that sort of sets them apart, and the reason why we needed to use them was because they've got a little pad, don't they, on the arse? Yeah. So that you don't <laughs> split yourself in half. <laughs> because the <laughs> the uh, seats of road bikes are just like razors, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they're hard. Oh, big time. Um, and so yeah, we were uh, dashing through uh, Lancashire. Wearing these, wearing these things. It must have been a sight. You in your white socks. Yeah. Me and my pasty white legs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Dan as well. Yeah. Both very see-free lads. You both look like bottles of milk. <laughs> <laughs> on a on a rainy Saturday morning, <laughs> it must have been a hell of a sight. But I think the cycle was fairly unadventurous. We we got through. Yep. Without any sort of notes of of. No. Did you fall off? No. No. It was. I was a pro by them. Nice. I was all good. I think <laughs> we, we got clipping out <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so we got we got to blackpool uh fairly safe yeah we got to the hotel yeah we checked in with the bikes <laughs> <laughs> threw them in the room yeah um lego lego dick are we mentioning lego dick well we have now so we'd have to <laughs> quantify that well i didn't know if you wanted it out in the public <laughs> domain or not <laughs> explain explain that you can't just go lego dick are we doing lego dick <laughs> So Dean's got a dick like a Lego brick, <laughs> basically. <laughs> we... More context to that, Gary, for fuck's sake. So we'd done this cycle uh, in the uh, pissing rain. It was yeah. freezing. Oh, yeah, it was cold, wasn't it, Dean? <laughs> uh, I invite you into my house. I make you a cup of tea <laughs> and you destroy me. No, but we, yeah, we'd got to, to Blackpool. We checked in. And we were wearing certain layers. We had like uh, coats on, waterproofs, obviously helmets, uh, running shoes. So we had to, uh, cycling shoes. So we had to get changed um, out of our gear just into our tri suits to go onto the run. And so we thought, what better thing to do than just to take a little selfie in the mirror? Uh, me, Dan, and, and Gary, I think we had our, uh, still had our cycle glasses on, didn't we? Looking yeah. all moody, like men in black, <laughs> looking all cool. And then uh, didn't think any, anything of it, did the rest of the day. And then uh, as we were sharing the things on WhatsApp, I think it was Dan, wasn't it? Yeah. Who just zoomed in onto my crotch. <laughs> and there's a very clear, very small bulge. <laughs> it's the weirdest <laughs> picture of this, uh, of, of my nether regions. Um, and he was like, uh, he was like, oh, nice Lego dick, Dean. <laughs> and so now anytime Dan is anywhere near any Lego, this can be the big Lego shop in Leicester Square. This could be Amsterdam Airport if he sees one Lego figurine. He'll take a picture and text me saying, all right, Dean, do you want anything? <laughs> <laughs> it's such a... Lego dick is such a great insult, though. It's very funny. Lego dick. <laughs> like it's got a rake of bobbles on it. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yeah, we done we done the photo of Lego Dick. Yeah, and then we set out on the streets of Blackpool. Yeah, it wasn't a particularly adventurous route, was it? We just literally we were right at the end of one of the of, of the end of the promenade in the hotel that shall remain nearly nameless, mm -hmm. um, and then we just ran as far as we could uh, across the promenade and then out towards the Pleasure Beach and the zoo and all that yeah. all that way, didn't we? And then just doubled back five and a half miles later because we did eleven miles I yeah, think that day. That's right. Yeah. 
I, mem- I remember once we'd got to the point where we were turning around, mm. I was getting really bad cramp. Do you remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you had to sort of slow up and, and wait for me mm. to stretch it off because I was, I was going down. Was that, I mean, that's the, probably the first time that we, you know, double trained. So yeah. you legs brick were training. Like, brick training. Okay, I'll believe you then. <laughs> um, yeah, and so I, I, every time I now do, especially triathlon, I cramp up like a, a, a beast um, towards the end of the run. Yeah, I th- but it's weird because we've done it without obviously doing the swim bit, mm. which is, I mean, you don't you're supposed to not use your legs as much in the swim anyway. To say, I do, <laughs> yeah, breaststroke man. <laughs> um, but yeah, cramp cramp was a big issue for me, and then we were sort of heading back, and was it you? Oh, I got some energy. Yeah, I was, I, I, and you... I, I I don't know where I found it. We didn't have any. Um, any food or anything on the run, did no, we? No, no, not on the run. We just jumped off the bikes, uh, took a picture of some Lego, and then <laughs> and then started running. But yeah, I, I, I'd left you guys in my wake a little bit. Yeah. Um, which I often get a load of energy at the end of a triathlon. Um, I think because run, I'm comfortable running. I think this is my time to shine, bitches. It was noticeable because you really did dust, you know, dust us off. Yeah. And I was running, it was me and Dan at this point, and what was good and what I did love about it, again, we were in our tri suit, so we must have looked like <laughs> semi professional, like we all the gear, no idea, kind yeah. of job. People were cheering us on. Yeah. Which I, I think that's great. Yeah, oh man, I loved it. There was, I remember the, in particular, at the end of one of the piers, there's this little old lady, and she must have seen us come past, there's a three, and then, yeah. as, and then just me by myself on the way past. And she was clapping, uh, she was clapping, she's going, You're winning, you're winning. <laughs> And it just made me laugh. I was like, oh, bless her. It's a training run. But I was like, I know, yes. <laughs> You'd say it all counts. Yeah, absolutely. We, we've covered this loads as well, but th- that, those interactions from other people, oh, God. They, get, they give me everything. Do you know what? I was thinking about this just the other day. I did a 14-miler um, as part of the Madrid training thing. And um, this young lad uh, on his bike, little proper little scally kid, mm. cycled alongside me for about, I don't know, a third of a mile. He's going, go on, lad, you got this. You got Brilliant. this, mate. You got this. And it was at a time that I really needed it. But what it does is, and what happened in Blackpool as well, is when you're super tired, you go inside your head searching for some strength. Yes. And then just by getting pulled out of your head and then back into the real world and engaging with human beings, you go, oh, shit, yes, I can do this because someone is encouraging me thus. Yeah, amazing. That, that's, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. I've never thought of it like that before. Yeah, well, it, it appeared to me in a dream the other day when I was doing that run. Literally just um, stopping yourself closing ranks yeah uh in your mind and just pulling you back out into the real world that's perfect yeah and i i love it other runners as well if oh. you if you're listening to this and you're a runner i'm sure the 99 percent of you do it anyway a little nod as oh. you're running past if i'm knackered i throw a little thumbs up yeah um because sometimes like like we just said i'm in my head completely but yeah i always always make sure that i give people eye contact it or really annoys you when i don't it. get it back yeah because <laughs> I, I don't i'm i'm a people person yeah yeah, yeah. I, ne- I need it and when, the they, when they don't give it me back it really brings me down <laughs> <laughs> no i know what you mean though i, I do it there's a um as an old disused uh railway uh near me and there's loads of runners that go up and down there because it's a lovely paved bit of um bit of um, cycle track but a lot of people running it mm. and I think a lot of the regulars that I see up and down there constantly waving, hi, how are you doing? Yeah. Um, and you do, you get you get a load of a speed out of it. Yeah. You feel, feel 20 foot tall. Yeah. I like mem- you're part of a club. I remember once where it was, it must have been last year at some point where it was really snowy and I decided to go out for a run in the snow and the, the sort of kudos you were getting off the other runners who were joining you yeah, yeah. on the snowy run as well made me feel so happy. Like, it was like, <laughs> yes, well done, lads. It was like putting in a proper shift. Nice. <laughs> well in. And then everyone who didn't run, you're like, you don't know, man. It was one of those. <laughs> you weren't there this morning, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just going back to, to Blackpool, um, it was a, first of all, a fabulous day out with me pals. Yeah. Um, which is so, such a huge part of why we do this. To... Who got ID'd? I've just interrupted you here. That was me. Was it you? You wouldn't yeah. get sick. I was fucking fuming, mate. Dean got refused service from <laughs> Weatherspoons in Blackpool. Can you believe that? As a 26-year-old, was I at the time? There was a group of seven-year-olds at the bar laughing at him. Yeah, yeah, with the pints. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I, I mean, I, I'm not a young-looking twenty. 
I'm, I'm 29 now, but I'm not, I wasn't a young looking 26. I no, thought. you certainly weren't. <laughs> <laughs> Haggard head. But mate, I was fuming. I had to send Dan up to get me a beer. I was like, Dan, will you go buy me a drink, please? I only wanted a pint of Guinness. <laughs> Done fucking three and a half hours worth of event. Yeah. Fuming. Probably not now, more than that to, to cover that. Um, but no, it was a great day. And it's, it's, I'm so glad we did it because it's so beneficial to see the physical toll that it has on your body just doing uh, this brick training. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, that was Blackpool. We uh, got the bikes back out of the spa hotel and, uh, and got on the Rattler home. Well, yeah, that must be a, a very... Uh, Different experience for you in uh, Blackpool there, Gary, aside from your usual ventures. Yeah, I think it's the first time I've been to Blackpool and not been fingered on the Big Dipper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now a quick word from our sponsors. Do you like cars? Well, you're in luck. Here at Car Shaft, we've got fucking football to cars. Uh, red ones, blue ones, ones without roofs, ones with free wheels so everyone knows you're a paedophile. Uh, a free air freshener for every customer. Uh, most of the cars are diesels, like, but, but don't worry about that. Climate change is a myth invented by the Chinese to scare your kids into being vegan. Come down for a free, for a chat and a free air freshener and, and, and a beef burger for the kids. We, we don't have the seeded buns though because Karen's allergic to fucking nuts, the bitch. Just come down and see us. I, I'm so lonely. Ask for Simon and we can have a chat. You don't even have to buy a fucking car. Car shaft. The family car store. So all training done and dusted. Yep. It was time for our first triathlon. The Fanbridge Half Iron Man. The Half Iron Man. Why did we start with a Half Iron Man? <laughs> I don't know. I did. I must say I did quite enjoy the training though. I did, yeah. I think when you've done a season of uh, of marathons where you're just doing a lot of training just in one discipline to do an, a, a completely different thing where you have to do other stuff, it was quite fun. Yeah, I'm going to be a little bit self-indulgent and just note on it as well, I was the fittest I'd ever been in my life. You got into ridiculous shape, yeah, by the way. Yeah, because I started going to the gym every day. Yeah. I was like, I was ripped. You were, yeah. There's a, there's a great picture which we'll tweet of, uh, again, camera ready on yeah. the course of Gary just flexing his guns. And it's like, oh, these swans are sick, bro. I, I was very sculpted. <laughs> it was a good feeling. You look great, man. I felt great. Well, I say I felt great. <laughs> we'll get <laughs> we'll onto get that later. That. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't feel as good at that point. I'd been to Glastonbury the week before. Was that the week before that triathlon? Yeah, well, you came the, the year after to Glastonbury, but that triathlon, um, the week no before, way. I was at Glastonbury. Idea, yeah. No, I mean, I was very fit. Um, I'd got into decent shape. I wasn't anything like, we call it TV's Gary Damod. Mm -hmm. I wasn't anything like uh, Gary was shape-wise, but I was pretty fit. But then a week of debauchery at Glastonbury is not a great way to set yourself up. Um, but we were all feeling fairly confident. Um, when it comes to logistics of these things, you obviously have to pack your car full of your gear. Uh, you've got to collapse the back seat, get your bike in, get mm -hmm. all your gear in. Um, but as, as well on this uh, triathlon, uh, one of the options uh, to keep things uh, nice and cheap was to uh, pop a tent up by the side of the river, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, you could camp on site, which I think is, as well you say to save money, it was part of the experience for me. Yeah. It, it was good to be able to camp on site and then in the morning you you could just walk it up and walk into the start line. Yeah, I wouldn't have changed it, no. regardless of how little sleep I got. Um, uh, yeah, but I get, we've covered this before when you slept behind the vending machine. <laughs> I think if you'd have slept in a hotel yeah. in the comfiest bed in the world, you're probably still going to get minimal sleep because of how excited you are. Very true, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was it was beautiful weather as well. It was it was a nice day the day before the triathlon. It, it was, was gorgeous, yeah. Sunny. We got some lovely pictures of us outside the tent. So I popped up a little tent. You and Dan were in a, his uh, big multi-domed one it's yeah. a fucking castle that thing <laughs> took you about four hours to put it up <laughs> <laughs> shouting throwing <laughs> throwing poles around um but yeah so we yeah we had a nice day and then we went uh, of course we did we went to the pub yeah uh had a little carbonara if i remember rightly yeah and a, a couple of drinks mm. <laughs> if they're gonna put a pub on the side of a triathlon <laughs> what do they expect <laughs> oh god i'm not sure that's uh that's on them i think that's definitely on us for yeah going to probably do. right probably right um but like, like we said, like the Blackpool trip, like anything we've ever done, social side of it. I don't get to see you guys too often. It's nice when we get these weekends away where we can just get a bit excited yeah. and have a few drinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're some of my favourite ever drinks where you've got that energy and that, that yeah. buzz running through you. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's the word? Emphasised? It can be, yeah, sure. 
underlined. Yeah. Exaggerated by cool. a little bit of a couple of units of alcohol inside you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, they're the best highs. The nervous adrenaline yeah. topped up with a little bit of vodka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I'm I all agree. over that. But we, we, so we'd, <laughs> we'd done everything. We'd done the tent. We'd gone to the pub. We were all ready for an early night. Yeah. And... <laughs> oh, it makes me laugh so much down the road it must have been a couple of miles away yeah it turns out there was a, a was it a festival or a, a music concert? festival yeah. right there was a music festival on and it was throughout the day we just couldn't hear it but obviously when it went dark night time obviously all the, tra the traffic noise and all that had yeah. gone Wow, it was so loud. My God. And Basement Jacks were headlining this, <laughs> this music festival. So we'd spent three or four hours till the wee hours listening to Basement My. Jacks. It was like we were front row, man. Oh, it was so loud. And they put on a great gig, to be fair. Oh, yeah, wicked. Excellent. I don't need to see them now. I what I was like doing I as well is I was going on Twitter and uh, hashtagging the concert. So I was looking at the visuals. Of... <laughs> So it really was like I was front and centre. Love it. Well, it was me and you there, not getting a wink of sleep because this just... <laughs> Where's your head yeah. at? And then next to Gary, fast asleep. Dan? Yeah. How we, did he sleep through that? It was brilliant because we woke up in the morning and we, like you say, you were in a different tent. So I said to you, God, bloody hell, that Basement Jacks concert was loud. And Dan's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what are you on about? <laughs> I can't believe that. How did he not hear a Basement Jacks concert? Oh, man. Well, the guy is so laid back. He's horizontal, isn't he, basically, yeah. Dan? Jesus and he's Christ. just passed out in the tent. Um, and it wasn't a booze pass out. I mean, we, we literally had, I think we had a beer, didn't we? So yeah. he's just chill. He just relaxed and just fell fast asleep. Yeah. Oh, man. I can never hear Basement Jacks now and not think of that night. Every time, when it comes <laughs> on the headphones, on the telly, yeah. anything at all. It reminds me of that sleepless night. Oh, man. Um... We were, that was it. We, we were up. Mm -hmm. um, we were on the start line. I don't... Th just before we start on that, I don't think I've ever been as nervous as that. No. Marathons, slightly different kettle of fish. The Todd Yorkshire, which we covered in episode three, I wasn't as... I don't know. I think it was the idea of the transition mm. on this. So when you come out of the water, you have a little run to get uh, your bike sorted and then after the bike, you so that uh, you get your, your running... Uh, gear on and so those transitions being having never done them before i was so nervous i remember sat on one of the bogs of this um <laughs> sit down wee <laughs> of the uh of the toilet block at the campsite and being really genuinely very nervous yeah it was we we noticed that the the field was really small it, mm. it wasn't an, um an official iron man event yeah. so it was a smaller field must have only been two three hundred do you think oh yeah definitely yeah yeah and the level of equipment there oh my god was like they were because i'm it made me laugh because they were tinkering with the bikes yeah, and like yeah. checking everything works and, and you had to like sign your bike in and out to make sure that like me wander in with a fucking 600 pound one and wander out with a six grand one do you yeah. know what i mean you had to make sure it was all up to date ids and all that gear they were taking it very seriously the people mm. around us and that i did f not so much nervous but i felt very out of my depth intimidated intimidated yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. i always feel like that at triathlons if i'm honest it's, it depends because that, for me, that one was it, that was like another level. I felt that one was like an a, an Olympic event because <laughs> they were so like the people had the aerodynamic helmets on. Yeah. And I I I cycle in a Royal Mail helmet. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That, and they they would sort of they had spanners out and yeah. screwdrivers tightening everything up. And yeah. I was dinging my bell, make sure my bell worked. Ding ding. Yeah. Flirt, flirting with everyone. Yeah. <laughs> and it, 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 I did feel very intimidated. Because yeah, I did. Then I thought, oh shit, this is this is a serious thing here. Yeah, I think that's be because we don't take it mega seriously. We're very fit, we prepare as well as we possibly can do, but because it's about having a laugh first and foremost for us. Yeah, for us, yeah. When you get to, into transition to set up your gear or you're at the start of a marathon and people are very focused, it does scare me a little bit because I feel like I'm missing a trick. Yeah. Um, but I like the way we do it, if I'm honest. 100% like the way we do it. And I wouldn't have it any other way because I think, what's the point in going to all that effort and training to not enjoy it? Yeah, 100%, yeah. Because we've seen it before. Do you remember at Preston? We've covered Preston Half Marathon. But about um, 500, 600 yards uh, from the gun, bang, off you go. 500, 600 yards later, I saw this guy turning back. Um, very fit guy looking at his watch. And I said, what are you doing, man? And he said, oh, I won't beat my personal best. And so he just turned around. What, and knocked it on the head? Knocked it on the head. 
because he wanted a PB because it was a flat route and he just had decided super early on two three what it was clearly a little bit over 500 600 yards but he decided really early on that he was going to get nowhere near his pb because of how badly he'd started so he just sacked it off that's not the fucking attitude no, charlie no so you've got to finish it haven't you yeah i think so anyway. you've got to enjoy it you've got to enjoy it but i didn't enjoy the swim on this one so <laughs> well we should say because it's you obviously start in the water yeah and it was a it was a tight is, is it a river a, what's it called it was a river but it was tidal because it was so close to the east coast of it England. was salt water which i didn't expect yeah yep. that, that nice little gob full of water surprised yeah. me yeah <laughs> so you you get in the water and because it was tidal the tide was pulling you away mm -hmm. and then the next thing the guy with the klaxons going this you've got to move back <laughs> the start line's over here He's yeah. waving out, so everyone starts swimming sort of back to where the start line, yeah. the invisible start line should have be. And then the fucker starts counting down. Yeah. You've got to swim back to the start. <laughs> Ten, nine. <laughs> so everyone's swimming in different directions. Yeah. And then he bangs the klaxon. That, that was a stressful start. It was. And do you know what it was as well? Because I always, at this, uh, because of my, I'm not a particularly strong swimmer, I always want to start at the back of these things because it's a proper scrum at the front. It's horrible. People elbowing, not on purpose, I hope, but people's it's, arms are going everywhere, kicking the shit out yeah. of people. And I, I'm not here for that. Do you know what I mean? I've, just... I've been involved in that. And it's, Have you? Yeah, because I'm quite a good swimmer, so I'm, I get in the middle of it. Oof. But it's, it's just because of the way you swim, your technique, you obviously you throw your arm forward. Yeah. If you're within that, that distance of someone, you're going to grab the leg. So there's yeah. a lot of grabbing and pulling, but not intentionally, and a yeah. lot of clunks on the head and all that. Oof. So it's a bit of a melee, but... After a minute or so, when it has spread it out, you, it's a lot easier, a lot calmer. Yeah. Um, but because we had to retreat, because the uh, current was taking us into the course as opposed to on stay on the starting line, we had to retreat back. And, <laughs> oh, man, to start your 1.2-mile swim with a fucking 0.2-mile swim back to the start yeah. line felt short change, me. Yeah, it was, it was a bit stressful, that. It was very stressful. Um, how was it for you? Good swim. Yeah, like yeah. I say, I'm, I'm pretty confident in swimming. I was never before I started training, but the training got me better. Yeah. I did all the Salford Key swims and all that. So yeah, it was good. It was a good swim. Nice. Well, uh, I I got, it was two laps. Can you remember? Yeah, we did two laps. So I did the first lap, and as I was coming up the straight, I had a little look over my shoulder, and people were finishing, and I was like, ah shit. Mm. Now they have a safety canoe where if you don't complete the swim in a certain time, they pull you out of the water basically and yeah. give you a, a little <laughs> a blanket and say everything will be all right sweetheart mm. and i desperately didn't want to be in there my my main goal for that first swim was just be ahead of the safety canoe yeah. so that i can get out of the water and carry on with the race sure um and as i got sort of round the the bend to sort of the the finishing straight as it were the uh tide was going the other way so i'm battling against the tide i'm battling against the time i'm getting i got a, a huge lung full of um of salt water mm. um and i threw up again i mean this is another bodily function mm -hmm. from behind the medal tick <laughs> tick tick uh, i threw up again this was a little bit more special because i threw up again and a load of fish appeared and ate it and oh, fucked up nice. <laughs> i was like <laughs> don't do it guys it's dirty <laughs> um, and then i was really aware that there was this canoe near me and yeah, i was like no hopefully. And so I just started speaking to him, really, really sweet guy. He got me through it, to be fair. And I said to my man, I said, oh man, am I, am I in danger here? Am I gonna have to join you? He's like, no man, you're fine, you're fine. Good. Um, and I said to him, am I the last person? He went, nope, I'll count them. And he, bless him, he went one, two, because everyone has to wear the same um, color, uh, what they call yeah. swimming caps. Yeah. And he went, I'll count them. And he went one, two, and he stopped counting at 14. So I was at least not 40, I was 14 from, mm -hmm. from the end. Um, and I just got loads of energy from somewhere. I managed to finish it. Brilliant. Um, but a struggle, real struggle. It wasn't easy. It was, the, as I say, the tidal and the salt water yeah. it was an unexpected twist. Absolutely. Um, but the worst thing about the whole thing, the worst thing was I got out of the water um, and we'd all racked up our bikes next to each other, myself, Gary and Dan. And I'd got out of the water. I'd lost everyone, obviously, at this point. We run our own races when we do these things. Um, but we always look out for each other. I got out of the water, went to sort my shit out. Gary's bike had gone. I had a little cheer. Yes, get the fucking mm -hmm. Dan's bike. Still there. Yeah. And I thought, oh, RIP, he's gone. We've lost him to the Thames. <laughs> um, and I was in transition for a little while, you know, putting, I had a little towel off, I had banana, you know, glug of water and all that stuff, sorting my bike out. And he still wasn't there. Oh, oh man, I was no. petrified. I started that race worried about me pal. 
So did you leave the bike before he'd come in from the swim? Yeah, that's what I mean. He he was still he was still going. I oh, think no. it, if I remember rightly, I did the swim in 38 minutes, which is decent yeah. for what I was capable of doing. And Dan, I think, was the last person out of the water. Wow. Um, just skin of his teeth stuff to get out of the water and get on the bike. Um, so yeah, but I was really worried to start. Yeah, but everyone made it out. Yep, absolutely. And um, about an hour into the bike, Dan flew past me on his fucking bike. Of course he did. Yeah, he didn't overtake <laughs> me on the bike. Did he not? No, no, I finished the bike before him. Mate. Yeah, yeah. I, mate, I was super fit. You were, you were in great shape. Yeah, yeah, I was super fit. I think that's right. Anyway, I, I feel like I've... No, I, yeah, that's, that is right. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. I, it was close. I remember he wasn't far behind me at all. Yeah. But I came in from the bike first as well. Nice. Yeah. My, my bike was fairly uneventful, aside from um, it, the roads were closed. Sometimes when you do these events, they close the roads. Um, but there were certain parts of it where there was a bit of traffic. And um, uh, <laughs> there was this car that was towing a caravan that overtook me. <laughs> but as it overtook me, your man must have forgotten that he was towing a caravan because he pulls back in and the caravan just hit me on the side. No way. Yeah, I stayed on the bike uh, and caught up with him and gave him uh, uh, my thoughts on the, uh, the event. <laughs> Did he say anything? Oh, he was super apologetic. Oh, was yeah, it good? Yeah, 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 big time. Um, but I, I managed to stay upright. But that's twice that's happened to me. It happened to me then, and it happened to me on a training run, where I presume it's the same thing. Someone towing a same caravan. guy. Just forgot, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's not a Watley Road fan. He thinks, yeah. I'm going to get this guy. <laughs> um, so then the run. We've done 1.2 mile swim. We've done 56 miles on the, uh, on the beaks, and uh, we come to the run. Now, the run, as I remember, was a lapped run. It was four laps. Four right? laps, yeah. Of, what would that be? Three miles-ish, just over three miles. Not sure. Um, how was that? How did you fare? So the run, for me, is where it, the wheels fell off. Yeah. I think I think I did two laps mm -hmm. about that. And then, oh, my God. They, they say hit a wall. I'd, like, hit a wall. <laughs> <laughs> the size. That wall would hit another wall. Yeah, it was, it was <laughs> bad. Like, I'd completely cut. I felt sick. Yeah, my legs had gone. Well, I remember passing you because it was a, it was a lap run. You were well ahead of me time wise of mm. the event, but I remember passing you on one of the laps because I still had a bit in the tank, and I passed you and I was like Gary, and the guy who turned to look at me wasn't me pal. You were vacant. You yeah. were, there was no color on you at all, and you could barely string a sentence together. You were still moving, but oh man, you were all over the place. Yeah, because I remember that, and I didn't even have the energy to sort of muster up a reply back yeah. really. And they were giving out um, on the on the feed stations it was coke like coke and biscuits mm. i think so I'd, I'd, but yeah. by then it was just too late i think nothing was sort of bringing me out of this this crash that yeah. i was in um but i'm i finished well i finished in six hours and two minutes wow did you is that yeah, what it was that was my time so oh, i was mega man. impressed with that for my first one and funnily enough i've never done quicker than that that's been my well, you do, you've said a million times you were in sick shape. I was. That probably helps. Yeah. I remember when you passed the finish line because they, there was a guy on the um, on the mic on the finish line that uh, was shouting out everyone who passed because we were all chipped, weren't we? Yeah. And so I was running around. Uh, I was I came in third out of us, us, us three. I was last. And um, I remember him saying, I just crossed the finish line is uh, Gary Damer. Oh, man, I, spr I was sprinting. I got so much energy. I'm like, it. yeah, passing this guy. That's my friend. <laughs> Oh man, I love love all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't hear Dan's name. I must have been in a different part of the course or something. But I but I heard yours go through. I was fucking buzzing. That's good. That's good. Well, I I won't sort of <clears throat> reveal what happened after the race because I want to hear about your run first. Did you did, was your run all right? Were yeah, you fighting fit. I was. You know, I, um, at the end of every triathlon, as long as I've got, as long as I'm not cramping, my uh, run is always pretty strong. I feel like I warmed up at that point. Right. Um, or maybe I've sort of shaken off the fucking traumatic swim. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, I, I, I kind of blasted round actually. It was a good. I got a really good time. Excuse me. I think I got about one forty five, um, half marathon. Yeah. On top of all of the other stuff going on. Decent. Man. Which is good. It's good going. I, I made up a bit of ground in you guys, and I finished in. I think it was six hours twenty. I finished. Right. So fifteen minutes or so after you guys, which is again nuts after. <laughs> six and a half hours worth of event that we all finished so close to each yeah. other um but yeah we finished i finished uh, uh after gary dan finished after gary uh and then i finished after dan and um <laughs> yeah everything was seemingly swimming uh we were going to a, a concert at wembley arena we were going to see uh, ed sheeran at um 
at Wembley Stadium and we booked this hotel. We're going to go have a lot of beers and celebrate with our medals. Uh, and I f passed the finish line and we'd met a guy camping. Do you remember that guy who'd yeah. done the Ironman? Bob. Bob, my <laughs> man, Bob. And um, he came up to me, him and his wife, uh, with a really concerned look on their face after I'd crossed the finish line. And I was like, what's going on? And he went, um, it's your friend, Gary. I went, <laughs> what? What the f what's, what's going on here? And uh, he said, uh, he's in the ambulance. And uh, do you want to carry on from here? <laughs> I was fucking bricking it, mate. I was terrified. Well, it's, I don't, I, weirdly, I don't remember much. I remember finishing and throwing up a lot. Yeah. Like, as soon as I'd stopped moving, that's when it all hit me. And I was, yeah. I was so sick. Sicker than Amsterdam, sicker than Tromso. Yeah, it was yeah. like ultimate. I don't think all the salt water probably helped much. <laughs> all the cans of flat coke. That. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I was sick a lot. And I just couldn't stop being sick. Yeah, they were giving you fluids and stuff, weren't they? Yeah, well, they, they couldn't even try. They couldn't even find a vein. Oh, my God. Oh, my, my arm was like a... A sewing, no, not a sewing needle. Sewing cushion. Sewing cushion, that's it. <laughs> I got stabbed in the arm a rake of times because oh, they couldn't even find a vein to God. get fluids in. Um, but yeah, I was just uh, just crashed completely, yeah. burnt out. And, and So same thing again, just blood pressure's gone, blood sugar's gone. I think so, but yeah. I, if, I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know what it is. Because I really felt like I was hydrated. I was mm. doing the gels at that point, and as I say, I was doing enough on the on the uh, on the run yeah. with, from the feed station. So I I don't know. I think it's just. Did they feed back on anything? The ambulance dudes, because they were really sweet. They were they were they were great. They were great, and they, they kept trying to give me like little sweets and things. But every time I put anything in my mouth, it just I just puked straight away. Yeah. Um, and they eventually got fluids in me, mm -hmm. which started slowly bringing me back to life. Yeah. And I was gutted because, um, as well as obviously Ed Sheeran, um, Passenger was supporting him. Yes. And I love Passenger, man. I, I'm a big fan of his. And ultimately, I missed, I yeah. missed Passenger. And I, I think I missed the first half an hour of Ed as well. Yeah, possibly. Um, but it was it was more important to get you fucking right, though. It was, yeah. But, you know, when you've got the pressure, and I didn't want to hold you guys back. So yeah. I didn't want to miss it for you guys. Oh, it's, it's one of them things, isn't it? It's... Um, but it was, I, do you remember I, I had some like three day old pasta in the back of my car? Yeah. That eventually was the only thing that would <laughs> stay down, um, which brought you back to life a little bit. Yeah. I don't know how, I can't remember how long I was in the ambulance for. It must have been about an hour or something. Yeah. Maybe even longer than that. Cause it, I, I'd, I'd packed up transition and there's nothing we could do. So mm. I'd, I'd packed up and, and was starting to sort of uh, get worried for you. Cause I didn't want you to have to, uh, you know, go to hospital and miss the gig. Yeah. Obviously, I wanted you to be fucking right. So if that was how what had to happen, then that was what had to happen. But, yeah. Um, yeah. It always just makes me laugh though. What Bob? How Bob just came over and told me that you were not feeling so well. <laughs> he, I mean, he could have been a little bit more subtle. <laughs> Honestly, it was like a doctor. Uh, we did everything we can. Yeah. Completely <laughs> ruining your high from finishing. Yeah. The event. Literally, had just fresh shiny metal around. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Dean. By the way, uh, your friend's knocking on heaven's door. <laughs> what? I did feel so guilty though because I, I wasn't well aware of that. I didn't, you know, our first triathlon, we, obviously we'd all finished, but I was so, I, I did feel really self aware that I was sort of ruining that. Mate, not at all, behind the medal. That's what it took for yeah. you to complete that in such a sick time, even regardless of the shape you're in. Um, and you still adhered to the mantra of no heroes. Mm. Uh, no, if at some point on the course you'd have been like, I'm tapping out, yeah. you would have still done that. It was just after the, the event. And luckily, uh, St. John's Ambulance and all those guys there were there to help you out, which they always are on courses. Yeah. Ideally, they're not needed. Yeah. But it's not, I don't feel like at any point during that race you uh, disrespected the no heroes mantra. Good. That's so I good to know. Yeah. Um, but we got to the gig, really nice gig. Uh, another bodily function thing <laughs> just before we uh, sign out from uh, today's uh, uh, triathlon chat. Uh, was another thing that you don't see on Instagram. I don't know why, but uh, during the Ed Sheeran concert, I uh, thought, right, I need to go for go for a, a wee wee, um, and I'm, <laughs> it wasn't a sit down wee this time. I'm still there, <laughs> and there was an awful lot of blood in my piss. Wow, really? Yeah. Why? Well, I go I was panicking, and I googled it, and the physical toll of doing that much exercise, doing that much of a strenuous activity, nearly seven hours, yeah. you know, six and a half, seven hours, can kick the shit out of your uh, of your liver. And oh, your, wow. your internal organs, yeah. Pissing blood. Mate, scary, you know. 
It's not like, you know, the sort of the deep orange when you're just very dehydrated or hungover yeah. or whatever. This was absolute red claret. <laughs> uh, mate, scary. But again, you're not gonna you're not gonna see that at the on you know the uh, Instagram yeah, on your Instagram story. <laughs> yeah, you'd get your fucking account closed though. Yeah. I was just gonna say it did make me laugh because I did have a nice shiny medal photo, <laughs> even though I'd just come out of an ambulance. Oh mate, we're nothing but hypocrites on this <laughs> yeah, podcast. No, I was thinking that total hypocrite. <laughs> Dino, this is the week. Right, you're going to score a point on the oh, quiz. Oh, this is it. This is it. I'm... Fourth time lucky. Yeah, come on. Right, okay. You ready? Three yes, questions. Yes, 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 yes. Question number one. Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, you know what? I'll re-listen to that over and over again, and oh, it still makes me laugh. Oh, man. you narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> Question number one. Yeah. What is Johnny Depp afraid of? Oh. Johnny Depp. He's Careful. afraid of uh, the no word. <laughs> well played. Uh, no, it's clowns. <laughs> <laughs> That's a normal fear. Why did you drop that in? It's just a fact. All right, fine, fine. Question number two. Mm -hmm. Guinness World Record time. Uh, the world record for the most Ferrero Rochers eaten in one minute. In one minute. Do you have to unwrap them or are they already deshelled? Good question. Don't know. Okay. I'm going to presume they already deshelled, so it's just pop, pop. I would say so. Um, 48. <gasps> Nine. What? Nine. <laughs> that wasn't me saying no in German. The answer is nine. <laughs> I really am shit at this. You Go are. On. Think about it. It's dry, isn't it? It's like the crackers. It's harder than you think. Okay, fine. Question number three. What type of sports person is most likely to get a diseased anus or rectum? <laughs> I <laughs> Again, man, what the fuck are you Googling? <laughs> I have an answer to this. Something came straight into my mind. <gasps> this is the week. Horse rider. Oh, no. No? No. Water skier. What? <laughs> Oh, I guess so. That makes a certain amount of sense. Yeah. Do you know what I like about this question? Go on. What type of sports person is most likely to get a diseased anus or rectum? Yeah, what's the difference? Well, I don't know. Is it not the same thing? <laughs> we should like, ask a water skier. It can't be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ask a water skier to bend over. <laughs> and there we go. Dean's quiz. <laughs> Five weeks in. And still yet to score a point. It'll happen soon. I believe in you. Okay, fine, fine. Maybe uh, maybe on episode six or seven or 12 or 14. <laughs> <laughs> if we're still friends by then. I think I use the answer 48 for everything. Yeah. If in doubt. You 48. Like number 23 with Jim Carrey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, but anyway, to, uh, to conclude uh, episode five of the Behind the Medal, uh, it's time for... Ginger wisdom. Ginger wisdom. Okay, it was missing for a week, but it's back. Ginger wisdom. Ah, oh, do you know what? I've not been able to sleep thinking about this. <laughs> I'm excited. Right, so same again. Two quotes. I just want to know your thoughts, mm -hmm. right? First up, you have a choice. You can throw in the towel or you can use it to wipe the sweat off your face. I like that. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it's good, that one. You can, you can quit mm -hmm. or you can use the thing that's making you want to quit as strength yeah is that it is that right yeah it can be i like what you've done with it um i think it's probably slightly more abstract than that it's just like a double towel reference <laughs> tell me tell me yours what your so one again? I, I i always have to put them into my own personal perspective so yeah. let's use the triathlon mm -hmm. i'm doing the run yep i'm not feeling very well mm -hmm. so i'm using the fact that i'm not feeling very well to power me through to get to the finish. Right, so uh, the quicker you finish, the quicker you can yeah. go in the ambulance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So to use the towel, I can throw it in the towel or I can wipe down my head. Or you can throw up in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> give it to a grown-up. Uh, verdict, I like that one. All right, cool. Good quote. Cool. Uh, it's very American, that, isn't it? Say it one more time. You, c you have a choice. You can throw in the towel or you can use it to wipe the sweat off your face. Yeah, it is very American. 
It's from a Gatorade advert in America. Second one. Gatorade. Gatorade. Other sports drinks are available. <laughs> um, pain is temporary. Quitting lasts forever. What do you think? Pain is temporary. Quitting lasts forever. Yeah. And see, I, I do like it, right? Mm -hmm. However, I feel like it's sort of shelling you a bit for quitting. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's victim shaming. Yeah. Because <laughs> going back to our no heroes mantra, I, we've we're going to come to it, but I've thrown in the, I've quit. Yeah. That doesn't, that's not state, that's not haunting. I feel like that's making me feel like it should haunt me. Yeah, and, and nobody give a fuck when you quit. We're like, are you all right, man? Yeah. <laughs> it's like you look after each other, don't you? But then what about your man from Preston? Who's the man from Preston? <laughs> <laughs> the one who started the run and then... Oh, yeah, that we mentioned before. Yeah. Um, I don't know... Well, I, are we being hypocrites again? But that was that wasn't because he was he was unable to complete it. That's because he uh, his pride came before a fall. He was like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna achieve this as quick as I want to achieve it. So I'm just gonna I just doss it off and go to the pub it, instead of like going pushing yourself. He wasn't pushing himself. He just fucked his timings up. Right. You, which again we'll cover. You push, 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 push. Had nothing else to give. Rightly so. Fucking cleverly went. Nope. Yeah, that's I'm me. Done. I'm 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 done. I'm, I've expired. Yeah. So I think there is a difference there. So say it to me one more time. Pain is temporary. Yeah. Quitting lasts forever. No, I've changed my mind. I don't like it because uh, it's shelling me. It is a little bit. It's it's going carry on. Yeah. Uh, Pain is temporary, won't it? Fuck off! Don't tell me what what to do. <laughs> do you know who said that? Oh, I like these. Go on. Uh, <laughs> is this going to annoy me? I hope so. It annoyed me. Uh, Lance Armstrong. Oh my God! Serial cheat. Oh my God! If there was ever anything <laughs> to make that quote worse, <laughs> fucking hell! Uh, everyone loved him for a while. They loved him for a while. Oh, he's got yellow bands and one bollock. It was this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a wanker! He's more hypocritical than us. Yeah, pain is temporary. So I took some juice to make it go away. Yeah. Quitting lasts forever. Fuck off, Lance. <laughs> <laughs> right, that is the end of episode five of the Behind the Medal podcast. Uh, Gary, have you got something to say right at the end here? Yeah, just uh, give us a shout out on Twitter. Tell your friends, write yep. them a letter. Tell it about how much you've enjoyed the show. Yeah, pigeon mail. Pigeon mail. Uh, yeah, telegram. What else is our kissogram? Kiss a gram. <laughs> Give someone a kiss and whisper behind the medal. That'll freak them out. <laughs> Way to not get a second date. Um, but yeah, just spread the word. Tell your friends. Um, tell tell one person on the, the bus. Um, but yes, uh, this has been episode five of the Behind the Medal. We'll see you next time. Uh, I've been Dean Smith. And I've been Gary Damer. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.